Welcome, today I'm going to be talking about moment generating functions. In particular, I'm going to talk about two theorems below. Um, the two theorems being um, <clears throat> this very first one, which is more or less called uniqueness of moment generating functions. And this one, which is two theorems combined. It tells you how to find the distribution of the sum of two or more random variables with scalar multiples. Um, so the second one is super, super useful. The first one is going to be used implicitly to solve problems. So I'll illustrate this below. Um, it is really useful to have a list of moment generating functions. This one was taken from Wikipedia. Um, so here's a list of distributions and moment generating functions. So as an example of this very first theorem you see, the uniqueness one, um, we are given the moment generating function mx of t as p e to the t divided by one minus q e to the t, where q is one minus p. Because it has a moment generating function that corresponds to a geometric distribution, we know that x has to be geometric. And geometric distribution has a parameter of p. This is equivalent to knowing the density function of x. So saying it's geometric with distribution p is the same as saying it has a density function f of x being 1 minus p to the x minus 1 times by p. So here in the list of distributions, they list the density function as 1 minus p to the power of k minus 1 times p. Here x is playing the role of k. I could have made this f of k, for example. Um, but is completely equivalent. Okay, so that's an illustration of that first theorem. You know, you have the moment generating function, and if we have a list of them, well, it's unique, so it has to be the same as the geometric distribution. Okay, this second theorem says if we have a bunch of xi's that are random variables, and they need to be iid independent ident excuse me, they need to be independent. So each xi only needs to be independent of the other with a moment generating function mxi of t. Then if you want to figure out the distribution of y, which is a0 plus a1x1 plus all, adding up all those things through anxn, also written in that second line as in summation formula, then there is a correspondence of moment generating functions. The moment generating function will be the product of e to the a0 times by mx1 of a1 of t, and that is function composition, a1 of t being the composite, and you multiply all the way through mxn of t and it's written in product notation there in the bottom. So here, we're gonna consider the transformation where X and Z are geometric distributions, each with the same probability P of success, and our goal is to determine the distribution of Y equals X plus Z. This is an illustration of the second theorem where you only have two just two random variables, x1 being x and x2 being z, a0 being 0, a1 and a2 being 1. Okay. We're going to use this theorem, and this theorem is going to tell us m y of t is going to be m x of t multiplied by m sub z of t. Since 
each of these have a geometric distribution, they have a geometric moment generating function. So we go all the way back up to this list. The geometric has P e to the T times by one minus Q e to the T as the moment generating function. So this will be P e to the T divided by one minus Q e to the T multiplied by P e to the T divided by one minus Q e to the T. Okay, now let's simply combine this and I'm going to write it as, well, it's simply P e to the T divided by one minus Q e to the T and squared. Well, let me look at this list of distributions. If I go under negative binomial, this looks a lot like a negative binomial distribution. So let me write down the negative binomial. So we're going to have that, if I copy this down right, P e to the T divided by one minus, and let's, let's look carefully, one minus e to the t plus p e to the t raised to the rth power. Okay, and let's just double check. Now, this looks super familiar to me. We just need to do some algebraic manipulations here. This looks like it's P times E to the T divided by one minus, and just doing some algebra here in the denominator, they each have a factor of E to the T. So I think it will factor as one minus P e to the T squared, or excuse me, to the rth power. And that's just algebra. If we factor that out, we'll see that we get exactly the same thing. So, hey, this is P e to the T divided by one minus Q e to the t, the r, and if we let r equals to two, we see that it's exactly the same as the distribution that we get. Okay, so this and this match, if I let r equals to two, so by the uniqueness theorem, first theorem, which says that moment generating functions are unique, we have a negative, we have that y is a negative binomial distribution with parameters P and R equals to two. And if we think about this, this makes a lot of sense. R equals to two is the number of times we need to see success until we stop. That's precisely what you'd get if you repeated a, a geometric distribution that's uh, then started another geometric distribution, as long as they're independent. Okay, 
So that was an example of these two theorems. Thank you very much.